So, look at that. All that time she's been in here and now she's been killed on the nest. Probably by a rat to be quite honest, which is really annoying, almost definitely by a really great rat that we're having to deal with at the moment. How annoying is that? Look, nature, harsh. Bull snakes have mostly shed out now. That was a nice colour. Still a couple more. Probably shed off today, slough today, and then we're going to feed them. Welcome back to the vlog everybody, out for a little walk, one of my favourite people there, look at that, oh yesterday I had a day off, I had a day off until the evening and I spent two and a half or three hours all evening basically until late doing the usual office work and paperwork and emails and ordering and all that but we had a day off, Jackie and Lily went out with some friends and Lily had a play time uh, and I just got all the stuff done at home that sort of been needed doing for a while when work's just got in the way. So now my schools are almost done for the for a few weeks of summer. I can sort of claw some stuff back. So gardening, I actually got out in my garden and caught up on all the things, all the bindweed that I got over the front rockery, just trimming stuff back, training the, um, oh goodness me, the grapevine and just all the stuff that I need to do, edging the lawn and so on and so forth. Now, our garden's not huge. Two years when we moved, the plan was to get somewhere with a substantial garden move away where land's a bit cheaper and get somewhere with a substantial garden look at that but having now got the fulcrum center with a lot of land there a lot more storage a lot of space and a lot to tend to we decided a sort of a normal average garden would be fine um it, you know it's got what we need it does the job it's beautiful and very relaxing with the big trees at the back and everything else. So it's nice and we've got that done. Beautiful, that is. I've got stuff done in the reptile room. Not quite finished, but did some more work on my new sort of tarantula uh, setup where I've got them on display. Bought some racking, built that. Got some lighting on there. Got a couple more spotlights today coming to add to that and some more labelling. And that'll be a lovely, nice, a nice display in the reptile room. Just for the spiders and some of the inverts. What else did we do? Oh, we've sorted out the, the dubia roach colony. So, for those that don't know, um, obviously a lot of my lizards and the spiders and things eat creepy crawlies, uh, which we buy in from the reptile shop on a weekly basis. But it's always handy to have a supply sort of on the go 
all the time. So that's what that's for. That'll take a few months, probably about six months really, before that colony is really full and packed and you can start feeding them to things, bless them. Wash the van, wash the van. Oh, so I used to have fast bikes, hot hatches and things like that back when I was a younger chap and yeah they'd get washed the bikes would get washed after i'd finished with them every single time so every time i got on my bikes they were spotless um and my cars were washed at least weekly and my work vans have always been washed at least weekly and i think that says a bit about you as a, as a tradesman or a workman that if you turn up in a uh yeah a beep hole of a van uh that's not tended to maybe that says something about your workmanship how you work and i've always prided myself in having like an immaculate vehicle because that's how I like to do my work not anymore just too much in my life um, yeah one of the reasons I've got a grey van is they don't show up the road grime so much but that's had a nice wash and now we're out and about <coughs> we've left them in our wake we're out and about dog walk and then Jackie and the girls have got an interview today with a lady that wants to be a volunteer. <coughs> Everyone's vetted. You think, oh, volunteer, well, they're doing it for nothing. They're helping you for nothing. Volunteers are a massive drain on our team, a massive drain until they're any good and they can work independently. And some never can. So we've decided it's really best to give them a, a thorough interview and try and weed out only the cream of the crop that we think they're going to get on and crack on themselves in a very short time and be able to work with animals. So that's their job, not mine. I'm way too soft. Dennis is up there. He's getting up there before me and he's gonna start digging out the hibernaculums and the ponds for the outdoor reptile enclosures. And then he's gonna... Little ground beetle on his mission. He's gonna finish those off, get the fronts on. Uh, and then I'm gonna go and get some plants to landscape them. So Mediterranean theme for one of them, because for this summer is gonna have the eyed lizards, the glass lizards, and probably the Mediterranean tortoises in, and a more um, marshland theme, British marshland theme, meadow theme for the grass snake enclosure. And we'll plant that out, you know, with suitable plants very soon, and I'll keep you informed there. So enjoy the rest of the vlog. Who knows what else is gonna happen, but I'll catch up with you soon. Just have a quick look at this. So this is what you call sort of wasteland, isn't it? It's disturbed land, not farmland now, not a building plot. It's all part of a quarry site near the river here. And do you know what? This sort of wasteland and brownfield land is incredibly valuable. And yet brownfield sites, of course, are easier to develop. They were once built on and so on, so they, they soon get planning. Whereas greenfield sites, much harder to do so. And yet it's often wasteland and straight brownfield sites that are far richer in habitat and diversity, often because of the planting. A lot of greenfield sites, just farmland. It's had a monocrop on it for years and years. It's pretty sterile. Whereas these brownfield sites and wastelands, you get a lot of disturbed seeds, annual seeds that have been in the ground dormant for years and years. And a lot of other stuff comes in on the wind rich habitat for insect life and therefore for everything else. This just came today. Anyone old like me, you'll know this is hilarious. I think I'm a strong enough strong man to rip two of those in half. <laughs> so typically, I had two batches of snakes hatching, quite rarely bred in the UK. Vietnamese blue beauties, but much more rarely bred at the moment, are the four line snakes hatching when I wasn't going to be able to get near them for at least 24 hours. So no chance of helping any out the egg or keeping an eye, which is always a worry. So I decided to cut the eggs. And that just means some have already hatched. So I know it's the right time for them to hatch. And I'll just make a little incision with a, sc a scalpel blade or a razor blade. And that means any snakes that struggle have a way out. I never used to do this. I used to be a firm believer in if they haven't got an egg tooth on the nose 
uh, to cut their own way out or, or they can't get out, then that's nature and tough, tough luck on them. Um, not fit for purpose. But the more and more I've bred snakes over the years, the more it's very, very frustrating to be breeding something very rare or unusual and maybe out of a clutch get two or three perfect babies, chunky, healthy babies that maybe just didn't have a egg tooth on their nose or it came off too early and they couldn't get out the egg and they then drown in the egg very quickly after their hatching time is due. Um, good news is, when I did get back to these guys a day or two later, we got absolutely lovely, good hatch of lovely, lovely baby snakes. So they'll be on the website once they're eating and settled and ready to go to their new homes. But especially pleasing, the four line snakes, the European four line snakes. First time I've bred that species, they're not, there's not many being bred in the UK at the moment. So it's like a, a really satisfying thing to see those wonderful babies. And they're some of the best looking baby snakes ever because they change as they grow into adulthood. They change their actual colour and pattern. Something I'm really enjoying, it is getting back into these amazing tranches and these sort of, I'm going on the theme of blue. Really been enjoying that. And you know what? I think it's because it's not just work related. Actually, actually something for me, kind of like the olden days, most of my animal keeping does revolve around my work. And, and it is, of course, it's, it's my passion, but it's, it's very much, how does this fit into the, to the work side of things? This is just purely selfish. I've just built this lovely rack set up, very inexpensive. I'll make a video on it and the inhabitants are gradually growing in there, but really enjoying these amazing spiders, especially the blue ones. Something else I've done is just titivate here in the dark frog enclosure. You may or may not remember us building this and making the background for it as well, but it's really establishing now. So I really need to get my finger out and get some inhabitants because the plants are really establishing. It's just, I'm having to treat it like a bottle garden and prune them back and keep everything in a kind of a little bit in check some want to outgrow the others of course and shade them out but it's doing okay but very soon time for some dart frogs to actually go in there Something annoying but typical. Finish that on suite that you may remember. That went on for quite a while. New shower unit. Two weeks later, no hot water. Brand new unit. What a load of fuss to send it back and everything else. I thought, let's have it to bits. So now I know everything about electric showers, every micro switch, every part. And you know what? It was a little sensor, an overheat cut out that if the, if the elements get too hot, it cuts out. The, the shower system, it, well, it cuts out the heating so nothing catches fire or melts. Little tiny micro switch that had failed 
on a brand new unit. 15 quid, it was cheaper to just buy one and fit it myself than send the whole shower unit back. But that's always our luck. Honestly, who else has a brand new shower in their bathroom and a tiny part inside it doesn't work? Oh, it's a perch. It's actually the first perch I've seen all the time we've been walking down here. Thanks for watching you guys. Please subscribe. We're nearly about 100 off 2,000 subbers. If you watch the channel and you don't subscribe, do us a favour. Just makes me feel better. Getting it up to 2,000. It's a slow burner, but it's growing all the time thanks to you guys. I'll see you in the next one.